What's going on, everybody? Good morning. As always, place your cross on first. How do you do that? Read the word, stick to the word, live the word, read the word, hey, commune with God, pray, help the poor, help other people out, forgive. Okay, the list goes on. I can give you numerous things. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. People, let's read from Ephesians chapter 5, and then I'm going to go to Exodus. And I'm going to see, see if you can connect the dots a little bit. Chapter 5. Be ye therefore followers of God, Ephesians chapter 5, as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also has loved us, and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting. You know what jesting is? Joking. You know, the Bible has a problem with joking. And when I read it, I'm like, man, I'm a joker. I'm like, that bothers me a little bit sometimes. You know, but you know how bullying is. Because people laugh. I'm sure God made laughter. People do laugh. You got to know the difference. But it's wrong. Like if you're offending someone, you're doing it purposefully, don't do it. Which are not convenient. But rather giving your thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things come up the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the word. Lord, walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. What do he say the fruit of the Spirit is? Goodness, righteousness, and truth. That's fruit. So you got to understand. There are different types of fruit now. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship. With the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things are reproved or made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he said, For wake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that we you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, hmm, but be filled with the Spirit. I can keep going on this. This whole chapter is great. But I'm stop there. He said, what he said? Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. All right, what would I have been talking about lately? Halloween. I'm just going to talk about that today. That's what I'm going to focus on. That's what, that's what I'm going to use this scripture for. Halloween. He said, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Okay. How do you know that Halloween is evil? All right, let's go back to the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 23. Are you ready? I hope you are. I'm going to read a lot of it. Thou shalt not raise a false witness report, but thou shalt not raise a false report. That's the first part about it. That's the first part. What is it? Thou shalt not raise a false report. I think. Nothing built on falsehood is of God. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Don't that kind of don't be part with the wicked? What he said? Put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Hmm. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. <laughs> hmm. But how do we eat that evil? Okay. Now thou shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after men to rest judgment. 
Now this shall thou countenance a poor man in his house. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going straight, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. If thou see the ass of him that hateth hate thee lying under his burden and wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help him. Even God is telling you to help people. If you see people in need. This is in the Old Testament. Keep thee far from a false matter. Huh? Christmas is false. Halloween is false. According to scripture. I ain't finished yet though. Keep thee far from a false matter. And the innocent and the righteous slay thou not. For I will not justify the wicked. And thou shalt take no gift. For the gift blinded the wise. In Halloween the gifts are candy. <laughs> In Christmas the gifts are gifts of all types and thou shalt take no gift for the gift blindeth the wise and perverteth the words of righteousness everybody like because you're giving gifts to each other it can't be nothing evil about this it can't be nothing evil about giving candy to the little children also thou shalt not oppress a stranger for you know the heart of a stranger seeing we were strangers in the land of Israel and six years thou shalt sow thy land and shalt gather in the fruits but the seventh year thou shalt let it rest and lie still, that the poor of the people may eat. Look at it. Look how God always considered the poor, even back then. And the stranger. And what they leave, the beast of the field shall eat. God even tell you to look after the animals. Make sure they eat too. For all these people that starve and they dogs and they pets. <laughs> but you're a Christian. Six days shalt thou do thy work. And on the Sabbath day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thine ass may rest. And the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. Why God gave you a rest day so you can be rejuvenated. But look at the world. They don't care. Working people seven days a week. Don't care. The world does not care. Mm. And in all things that I have said unto you, be you circumspect. And make no mention of the names of the other gods. Now that it be heard out of thy mouth. Look at that go hand in hand with Ephesians. Now why she finna tell you the days to keep. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. How many churches are pushing this? Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. What he said? Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days. I said, I commanded thee. In the time appointed of the month of Eve. Look it up. For when thou camest out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest. <laughs> there you go. The feast of harvest. He got his feast of harvest, and he tells you how to accomplish it. And... The Feast of Harvest is not the same as this Harvest Fest that is called Halloween. It's not the same, people. Which thou hast sown. And the Feast of Harvest, the first fruits of thy labor, which thou hast sown in the field. And the Feast of Ingathering, which is in the end of the year. Okay. You want to celebrate something at the end of the year? There you go. The Feast of Ingathering. You want to celebrate a harvest? He just told you what to do. The Feast of Harvest. <laughs> Read the word. I'll tell you how to do it. The thing is, I don't even do it. But I'm telling you, if, well, if I'm not going to do that, why am I going to do Halloween or Christmas or anything like that? But the thing is, the reason why it's not being done, because it's not being taught. Because <laughs> all the holy days have been scrapped for these holidays. <laughs> Three times in a year, all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Three times in a year. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven bread. Now we know the sacrificial part is done away with. Now thou shalt the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land, thou shalt bring it to the house of the Lord, thy God. That's where they get tithing from. But he's talking about food. Thou shalt not sieve a kid in his mother's milk. I mean, you shall not boil a kid, a cow, a calf in the milk of his mother. Hmm. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he would not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to thine enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries. For my angel shall go before thee and bring thee into the Amorites and Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Now think about our land. We not, might not have Canaanites and Hittites and all that, but we got all kind of people coming here. <laughs> you know, God would give up, give people into our hands if we be obedient. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them. 
nor do after their works. What did he say? Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works. So we shall not do what they do. Let's keep going. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. But look at the world we live in, in America. Have we been doing this? And you shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Thou shalt nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land. The number of the days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before the people and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thy enemies turn their backs unto thee. Hmm. And I will send the hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite and the Canaanite and the Hittite and from, from before thee. Now think about why is the, the Lord not driving out our enemies, enemies before us? Just letting people come into our land and just take over. Uh, you, you, you know the answer. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. By little and little, I will drive them out before thee. Well, think of, look, this is the land we live in. It don't look like nobody's being driven out. It looks like people are coming in with their evil ways. Because we're letting it. Because we've been rebellious against God. I will drive them out before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. Hmm. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even unto the Sea of the Philistines and from the desert into the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them nor with their gods. It's self explanatory. They shall not dwell in thy land. Now watch this. Watch this fruit. Lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. All right. So what's the problem with Halloween? First, you got to do the history. You got to do the research on it. See what Halloween is all about. See if it's about God. It is not. Do the research on Christmas. See if it's about God. It is not. We can't take a pagan practice and make it God's. He just said it. He just said it in his word. So what's the issue? The righteous shall not dwell with the wicked. All right. So why you got Christians and non-believers alike indulging in the same practice? It's in the word. I just read it from Ephesians from you, for you. He said, but rather expose them. Mm -hmm. Reprove them. You see, sometimes you got to read the old to get the answer to the new. Now he told us the holy days and it's more than that. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, how long is church? I'm not over at church. Let's keep that in mind. I'm, I'm going to throw myself out there. <laughs> I'm not running into no establishment. Mm. I'm not over no building. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people that are. <laughs> and a lot of pe people, a lot of them are embracing pagan ways and pagan practices inside their churches. God is okay with it. Uh, we just read, if God was okay with it, the land wouldn't be like it is. America wouldn't be like it is. You see, the angel of the Lord goes before you as long as you keep his ways. But he steps back when you don't. So look at America. Think about homosexuality and things of such. Are those of God? No. Is the LGBTQ community over God? They even got a pride month. Is that of God? Mm -hmm. So that's a new holiday. Pride Month. Now we got Pride Month, which is a month, but we can't keep none of the Holy Feasts for seven days. You see, my goal, if God wills it, if he was to put me in a building that is called by his name, is to bring reform. To bring the truth out. I may lose 90% of the congregation when I start. But that's cool. But I'm going to preach the word correctly. Because mm -hmm. I don't want nobody to what? Perish. Because God doesn't want anybody to perish. He said, my people perish for what? Lack of wisdom. 
or knowledge, however you want to say it. People. And people just don't care anymore. <laughs> they don't. Well, it feels right. It seems right. But is it right to serve God in a way that he said not to serve him? <laughs> Ask yourself that question. If you don't know the answer, read the Bible and he'll tell you how to serve him. And he'll tell you not to. When will he tell you not to do it? Let's say, all right, like I, I always try to figure out what the, the groves mean, but I, I went to a customer's house and I saw a grove and I saw a, a statue of Buddha in there. So let's say as a Christian, I'm like, well, I like that. And I'm going to make a grove for the Lord. Where in the Bible did they make groves for him? Let me pause and I will continue.